So, let me tell you what the uh, solution is, uh, what the methodology is and the methodology is just uh, a Bayesian modeling approach, right. So, we are going to take uh, a Bayesian approach. So, what is the Bayesian modeling? Uh, just to recap in uh, basically in Bayesian modeling you have a prior over the parameter you are trying to estimate and then you have a likelihood as usual and then you will get a posterior uh, which depends on the prior and the likelihood, right. So, which means in our case the parameter that we are trying to estimate is the W which means we need a prior on W, right. So, we need a prior um, on W that is we need some P of W where W remember is a d dimensional vector. So, which means over all possible d dimensional vectors we need some you know probability distribution right. So, some density function right. So, because it is it is a continuous uh, space. So, you need some density function we will talk about what this density function might be suitable here in a minute, um, but we we need a prior all right. So, but what is the likelihood? Well, the likelihood is something that we have already put down right. So, our y given x we already know is Gaussian w transpose x with some variance sigma squared. Here I am just going to assume for ease of uh, exposition that the variance is 1. It does not really matter we can think of it as sigma squared and things will go on smoothly as well. Uh, but one would make things slightly easier to I mean less messier right. So, to deal with this right. So, this is just for simplicity uh, can use sigma squared as well. Now, the question is well we have put down the likelihood which is a Gaussian likelihood. Now, what is a suitable prior? Uh, when I say suitable prior we want the prior to be such that you know the posterior is easy to compute. Um, now, if you remember if you, when we had a Bernoulli likelihood when we are doing unsupervised estimation when we had a Bernoulli likelihood we put down a what is called as a beta prior and that gave us a beta posterior. And now the biggest advantage of that is that because the prior and the posterior are of the same distribution they, they take the same functional form in this case the functional form is just the density of the beta distribution that helped us update the parameter really quickly. In fact, such a prior that, that that for a given likelihood leads to a similar posterior has a special name it is called a conjugate prior right. So, we would say the beta prior is actually conjugate to the Bernoulli likelihood. So, which means if I give you the likelihood I give you the likelihood I tell you what the likelihood is it could be uh, in the case of coin tosses it was uh, it was Bernoulli in the case of uh, this model that we are looking at here it is a Gaussian likelihood some likelihood function I give you. Um, and then you give me a prior such that if I do prior into likelihood I get a posterior which is also of the same form as the prior. If you can manage to do that then such a prior is said to be conjugate to the likelihood that I gave you. We know that we have already seen that the beta prior is conjugate to the um, Bernoulli likelihood. So, now what prior is conjugate to the Gaussian likelihood because this is a Gaussian model here what prior should be used? Well, the Gaussian is e power something. So, you are if you want to multiply e power something with some some prior such that the posterior also looks similar, well you can multiply e power something with another e power something as the prior and then the powers will add up and then you will get e power something as the posterior also. So, your prior, prior also somehow feels like it should be e power something kind of a density uh, and once the choice is the Gaussian itself. So, a good prior here might be simply the Gaussian prior itself. A choice for prior could be the following, right. So, remember prior means I am encoding my prior belief about every choice, every value of w. How much do I believe that a particular w will occur? Of course, because w is continuous, we need to encode our beliefs using a density function, and that density function is what I am going to write as uh, well, our w is can be thought of as distributed as Gaussian. But remember w is in d dimension. So, this is with mean 0 which is a d dimensional mean this is a vector 0 uh, and some uh, variance which I am going to call as gamma squared times i right? this is a covariance because it is a d dimensional uh, d dimensional uh, vector space in which we are trying to impose our prior. 
uh, what we are essentially saying is that every component of W is a Gaussian with 0 mean and variance sigma squared, uh, sorry, gamma squared and um, uh, the components themselves are independent of each other. So, which means uh, if you, if you, uh, if you had to generate a, a W from the prior distribution, the way you would do it is you will pick each component W i from W 1 to W d, each component by randomly sampling from a Gaussian with 0 mean and uh, variance gamma squared, right. So, this is basically the uh, covariance matrix. Okay. So, this is a matrix in R d cross d, where the matrix actually looks like gamma squared, gamma squared dot dot dot, gamma squared, everywhere else it is 0, right. So, that is that is the assumption about the covariance matrix that we are uh, for, that we are making. Okay, as usual uh, in Bayesian modeling, what we do is we compute the posterior, which means that we want to compute the probability of W given our data, which is x1, y1, dot, 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 xn, yn. This is how the data is generated, that is the assumption we made. And that we know is proportional to the likelihood which is uh, probability of the data itself, seeing the data itself uh, given a particular choice of W, given W like multiplied by the probability that you see W itself. Well, this is the likelihood term, this is the prior term and we know how these terms look like. So, the likelihood term looks like the product of I equals 1 to N because the points are all independently generated. Well, what is the chance that I see uh, y1 uh, when the actual feature is x1? Well, that is e power minus y1 minus w transpose x1 squared by 2 because I am assuming the variance of the noise that generates the data is just 1, right. So, if you remember our likelihood here, we are assuming this as 1. So, there is no sigma squared here, it is just 2. Um, and I am going to leave out the constants 1 by 2 square root 2, 2, 2 pi that is not important because I have put a proportionality sign here. This is the likelihood multiplied by, now what is the prior? Well, the prior is just, um, you know, your W, given a W, you know, the chance that this is generated is um, every component is a Gaussian with 0 mean and variance gamma squared. So, this can be written as e power, um, you know, the product of i equals 1 to d each component is generated as minus w i minus the mean itself is 0, right. So, that is the assumption uh, squared by 2 gamma squared, which which can be written this this guy can be written as e power minus, um, you know, it is a, um, uh, sorry, uh, the product should not be here, um, it's, it's basically a product of i equals 1 to d e power this, right. So, every component is generated uh, in a in a independent fashion with 0 mean and uh, sigma squared as a gamma squared variance which is this product. So, which is just e power minus sum over i equals 1 to d uh, w i squared by 2 gamma squared. Now, this is just uh, I mean you can rewrite this as I will just keep the proportionality i equals 1 to n e power minus y y i minus w transpose x i squared by 2, this is the likelihood multiplied by e power minus 1 by 2 gamma squared, sum over i equals 1 to d w i squared is just the norm w squared, right. So, that is just the norm w squared. So, this is, this can, this is, this can be thought of as just e power minus norm w squared by 2 gamma squared. So, this is our posterior form, right. So, this is how our posterior is going to look like. Uh, of course, there are going to be constants which will make sure it is a density and so on, but then it is going to be proportional to this. So, which means if I want to look at the maximum a posteriori estimate, right. So, uh, how will the map estimate, maximum a posteriori estimate look like? we can ask that question. Well, how is that going to look like? Well, that is going to look like the following, right. So, uh, I am going to 
take the so maximizing the posterior forgetting the constants the constant won't change the w so i want to maximize this product which means i can equivalently maximize the log of this right so which means uh, w hat map is going to be the max over w the log of this quantity uh, the the likelihood times the prior uh, which looks like log will convert the products into sums so this will be sum over i equals 1 to n minus y i minus w transpose x i squared by 2 uh, minus norm w squared by 2 gamma squared which happens to be just the minimization equivalently the minimization uh, over w well this is going to be the argument max this is the arg max because we are asking w hat a map is the argument which w maximizes this quantity is w hat map so i write a arg max there so equivalently the minimum of uh, sum over i equals half into sum over i equals 1 to n y i minus w transpose x i squared plus the negative minus goes away because i have changed the max to min plus 1 by 2 gamma squared norm w squared okay um, so now we can ask how does this solution look like right so earlier for the maximum likelihood we only had this term only the first term now we are adding an extra term which is 1 by 2 gamma squared and then uh, we are multiplying by norm w squared and we are asking how does this uh, this combined thing looks like the solution to this looks like well we can still take the gradient set it to 0 and see how it looks like well uh, take derivative gradient set it to 0 to solve for w hat solve for w map w hat map uh, i strongly encourage you to try this i'm going to tell you what 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 is the gradient and what comes out of it but please do try this okay so if i do that so the gradient uh, of this function if i think of this whole thing as f of w right so this whole thing think of this as f of w uh, so the gradient of f of w is going to look like x x transpose w minus x y plus w by gamma squared uh, please verify this this is just one step and you should be able to do this if you have been following all the lectures so far verify this um, okay so this means uh, now w hat map then can be written as setting the gradient to zero as the following x x transpose plus one by gamma squared into i inverse x y this is our maximum a posteriori solution <coughs> this should look familiar to us right so this solution is exactly the estimator that i just pulled out of the hat and then we argued that that estimator has it's for some choice of uh, lambda instead of 1 by gamma squared we used lambda there and I said for some choice of lambda that would be a better estimator which with less mean squared error. Here we are saying well the same estimator can be got in a slightly in a completely in fact a completely different way of looking at things where we, we start with a Bayesian model where we impose a prior on our w's and then ask the question well if I impose this prior what comes out of this as the maximum a posteriori estimation and it turns out that what comes out is exactly the same estimator just that the constant now is different. There we were cross validating for lambda. Here you would do the same thing. You would cross validate for your gamma square. It is exactly the same thing because it's just a number at the end of the day that you are trying to see which number best fits the data in some sense, right? So this can be cross validated in practice. In practice. So what's the conclusion from this from this exercise? So something very interesting has been uh, arrived at, right? So we are saying uh, map ex is estimation, the maximum a posteriori estimation uh, for linear regression with uh, with a Gaussian prior with a Gaussian prior. Uh, norm of 0 comma gamma squared i this was the prior remember this was the prior 
where the zero is a vector, right? So it's a d-dimensional vector because we are we need a prior on the entire d-dimensional space. Um, for w, of course, is equivalent. What is it equivalent to? Well, it is equivalent to the new estimator that we just pulled out of the hat, right? So we used earlier. So now this is a much more principled way to understand this, right? So we started with some uh, linear regression problem. We solved the problem, we got a solution, and then we said that, well, we can to think of the same thing as an estimation problem where we get a maximum likelihood estimator. Then we looked at the Bayesian version of this, and we are saying that, well, in the Bayesian version will give us a new estimator, which perhaps is uh, better in practice. Uh, 